Gentlemen, this is the final part in my series of videos on the fastest checkmates in chess history. If you cheated by coming here first without watching parts 1 through 10, just remember, cheaters never prosper. The links to the first 10 videos are in the description. Game number 100. This next game was played a number of times as evidenced by the comments on the Reinecker vs. Jung game on chessgames.com. Um, perhaps the most duplicated of all games in this series. We have Tristan Reinecker vs. Matthias Jung. Zollingen Championship, Round 4, Zollingen, Germany, May 30, 2004. Also, Anonymous vs. Mindboggle. Anonymous vs. Bill Wall, Prime Mover, Zone.com, December 9th, 1998. Anonymous vs. MJ Mori. Anonymous vs. Info Hunter, Summer of 2018. And Multiple Online Opponents vs. Frederick Ryan. Um, so it is A from Gambit. Um, and White's second move is G3. And then we have E kills F4. And here comes the mistake. Um, G kills F4. And then white plays queen H4, mate. So basically just a variation of fool's mate. Um, it's such a common trap. You know, um, People fall for it because they see a pawn at f4 that's undefended and they're like, oh man, I'm going to get me that juicer. It's a small juicer, but it's a juicer. And when people see a piece on priest like that, they often don't think about the consequences. Um, they don't think about their king because, I mean, look, the king's here. It's way far away from everything else on the board. So... But, you know, queens have this ability to make long diagonal moves, and boom, it's just game over. Um, and then the next game, um, perhaps the most important game in this whole series, because uh, apparently it's got my name on it. Um, there, there were three instances of this game, uh, so my game was not unique. We've got Ivan Skrypin versus Alexei Glebov. Ukrainian Junior Under-8 Championship, uh, Round 4, Yevpatoria, Ukraine, May 12, 2007, Anonymous vs. Pavo, and Anonymous vs. Jimmy Vermeer. Um, this is the only game in this series where an anonymous player is someone whose identity I do actually know. Um, it is a bird system game. Um, I played E6. Uh, because I didn't know about Fromm's Gambit at the time. E6 isn't a bad move. Um, apparently not the best move either. Um, the opening explorer recommends D5 here. But I played E6. And my opponent said to me, at this point, um, something along the lines of, I'm such a noob, I have no idea what I should play next. And me, being the benevolent nice guy that I am, wanted to warn my opponent against the danger of playing g4. So I said, why don't you play g4? My opponent, thinking that I was uh, using reverse psychology, played g4. And without a moment's hesitation, I played queen h4 mate, uh, because I'm such a bastard. Um, the next opening that I'm going to show you is the grob opening. Again, one of the worst moves white can possibly open with. I'm going to show you three games that begin with the grob opening, and in all three cases, black wins in a similar fashion. Um, so white's first move is g4, actually the worst one on the list, at the very bottom there. Um, game 102, 
is uh, Baijin Tavasoli versus Sabine Skocknecht, Fifth Harburg Championship, not a typo. Harburg is a, a borough of Hamburg, actually. Round 5, Hamburg, Germany, July 8, 2007. Um, G4, E5, F3. F3 is a bad move. It opens the door to Fool's Mate. Um, and Mr. Tavasoli resigns immediately uh, because Queen H4 check is, uh, checkmate is coming. Uh, game 103, Anonymous versus Frederick Ryan. That name keeps coming up. Frederick Ryan is apparently very proud of all of his very quick wins. This was on playchess.com, December 17th, 2009. Um, so instead of f3, uh, it's f4, which is actually just as bad as f3. Um, Mr. Ryan thought about taking the pawn here, but then had a better idea, a queen h4 mate. So again, it's those diagonal queen moves that catch white off guard in the fool's mate. Uh, then we have game 104, Lance Starling versus Richard Wood, April 1983. Um... Yeah, right. After g4, black plays e6. And then, unfortunately, we have f4 here, which is the fool's mate again. Um, and black plays queen h4 mate. Uh, Lance Darling is a 1900 plus rated player, and as such, he could probably kick my butt quite consistently. He would not play this way. Uh, this game was published in the April 1983 issue of Northwest Chess Magazine, and Lance Starling himself confirmed that it was an April Fool's prank. Richard Wood was a good player too, uh, but he passed away in 2003 at the age of 44, which is how old I am now. Um, the next opening I'm going to show you is the Dunst opening, also known as the Van Geet opening, or the Sleipner opening, or the Heinrichsen opening. Uh, for an opening that is known by so many different names, I'm only going to show you one game that began this way. Game 105. Um, Oscar Bjarnason versus Volkfried Dittler. Uh, 17th, Bad uh, Vereshofen Open. Round 8, Bad Vereshofen, Germany. March 22, 2001. Knight c3 is White's first move. Um, and then we have e5, uh, which is the reverse Nimzovich variation. Knight f3, d6, e4, bishop g4, Bishop c4, and it now transposes to a position uh, similar to the one seen in De La Galle versus St. Brie early, earlier in this series of videos. Uh, so you can naturally expect the same type of mate to happen. We have Bishop h5, uh, Knight kills e5. Um, and he falls for the bait again. Uh, bishop kills d1, there's that big juicer again, then white has mate in 2, bishop kills f7, uh, check, king e7, knight d5 mate, Legal's mate, again. Um, the final opening I want to show you is the Reiti opening, also known as the Zuckertort opening, or the King's Indian attack. It's a pretty solid opening. There are four games that begin with the Reiti opening. And white wins all four of them. Game 106. Um, Miranda McCades versus Dina Balankaya, Women's European Championship, Round 10. Um, Belgrade, Serbia, August 2, 2013. Uh, Knight F3 is white's first move. Um, and then d5, which is the Zuckertort defense, d4, 
knight f6, bishop f4. Um, this transposes to the London system. Uh, c5, c3, queen b6, queen c2, bishop f5, Um, and that's a, a mistake. White's totally winning now. Um, again, trying to bait White's queen into taking, uh, allowing uh, queen kills b2, winning the rook. Of course, White takes the bait. Black thinks she's going to win, but she's not going to win. Um, she thinks, oh, queen kills b2, I'm going to win the rook, probably win, you know, some other things around here. Um, but that's not how it goes, because white, again, has queen c8 mate. Um, you will recall that this is a similar trick to the one that we saw in Vogel versus Kravac earlier. Uh, just a slightly different formation of white's pieces, but the important moves are the same. Now, game 107, Alfred Schroeder versus Roy Turnbull Black, New York City, 1912. Um, White's second move now is um, e4. e4, that's the Tennyson Gambit. And then Black plays d kills e4, accepting the Gambit. And then we have knight g5. Knight f6, knight c3, um, bishop f5, queen e2, c6, Knight g kills e4. Knight bd7. And that's a mistake because now white wins. Knight d6 mate. Um, and again, you know, can't take the knight because then the queen comes in. And now we have game 108, uh, Scher versus Rubosch, Dresden, Germany, 1936. Um, so we have knight f3, d5, e4, d kills e4, knight g5, knight f6. So it begins the same as the last game, uh, knight c3, and then instead of knight bd7, we are gonna, or sorry, instead of uh, instead of bishop f5. We're going to have knight bd7. So that's this one here. And then white on the fifth move goes queen e2. And then we have c6. Knight g kills c4. And here comes the mistake, g6, taking, uh, g6 is actually not the only losing move here. There are, there are probably a whole bunch of moves that lose in this position. Um, g6, of course, is one of them. Um, knight d6, mate. Uh, and now we have game 109. Hannibal Swartz versus Oliver Mull, Round Robin, Melbourne, Australia, August 14, 2012. And here, after Knight of Three, Black's first move is G6. Um, 
G6. Where is that? There it is. There it is. It's the uh, Kingside Fianchetto variation. And then we have C4. E6. Knight C3. Ninety-seven, ninety-four, D five, and that's a mistake because now White wins with Knight F six mate. Um, so this concludes my series of videos about the shortest. <coughs> the shortest checkmates in the history of chess. I hope you found it entertaining. And if there are any lessons to be learned from this, first, get to know these openings so you can avoid falling victim to these quick mating traps. And second, if you ever have been uh, checkmated in one of these ways, don't despair. Learn from your mistakes and become an international master. And since you won't be able to make them all yourself, learn from the mistakes of others by watching and re-watching these videos if necessary. I hope you also enjoyed all of the backstories that I told about these games and players and the circumstances surrounding their losses. By the way, I don't know if any of these stories are true or not. It's just what I read on the internet, and you can't believe everything you read on the internet. Um, everyone who plays chess likes to brag that they've won a game in one of these ways. But for every person who wins a game this way, there is another person who loses a game this way. You don't hear them bragging about it so much. Have you ever won or lost a game in seven moves or less? Let me know in the comments. When I told my co-workers I was making this video, one of them suggested I would get more followers if I did it shirtless. What do you think? Tell me in the comments, should I remove my shirt for the next video? Also, tell me in the comments, what should my next video be about? While I was making these videos, and adding positions to the opening explorer so that I could present them to you using that medium, it occurred to me that I don't actually know exactly how good some of my past analysis is. Therefore, after making an opening explorer with 22,017 positions in it, I have decided to add a depth field. Going forward, this will ensure the optimal possible accuracy of any future analysis that I do. Also, once that's done, another project I want to start working on is a search feature. In the future, you'll be able to search my opening explorer for positions based on number of pieces, number of legal moves, whose turn it is, who's winning, whether any checks are possible, whether there's a non-basant capture possible, etc. I'll probably tell you more about it in a future video. Oh, and one last thing. Uh, you've probably noticed that my webcam isn't very good, so please buy me a new webcam. Now, go out there and win some chess games.